Why do we sometimes cry because of overwhelming grief, and other times because we saw a gum commercial about two people falling in love? Those tears have something to do with your brain. And I know just the person that can explain. When was the last time you cried? I cry all the time. Like, all the time. Like when that Olivia Rodrigo driver's license song comes on? I mean, she was only 16. She's not ready for that kind of heartbreak. I used to fight the tears, but then I learned the science behind them. And guess what? No need to fear the tears. Tears can actually be good for us. Hi, I'm Dr. Brain. Okay, my real name is Crystal Dilworth, but I have a PhD in neuroscience, so it's easier to just call me Dr. Brain. So, I'm Dr. Brain. Tears can be triggered by all kinds of overwhelming emotions, from things that make us feel good, like joy and surprise, to things that make us feel bad, like grief and anger. But what exactly are tears? Tears are what we call the salty liquid and proteins released from glands in our eyes called lacrimal glands. Has anyone ever called you lacrimose? Okay, probably not. But if they did, that word is used to describe being full of tears. And the word comes from the lacrimal glands that produce them. Our bodies have three kinds of tears. The first are the tears that normally keep our eyes wet and clean. These are called basal tears. Second are the tears that well up when you're cutting onions or when something gets stuck in your eye. These are called reflexive tears because they happen reflexively in response to irritation or injury. The third type of tears are emotional tears, and that's what we're most interested in. I mean, I'm called Dr. Brain, not Dr. Onion. Babies cry to get attention and alert caretakers that they're in distress. But as we get older, tears can be triggered not just by physiological needs, but by emotional needs. And our emotional tears are special. Other animals don't cry like we do. Humans are the only species that responds to emotions by leaking liquid from our eyes. Take that, birds. I think flying is so great. It turns out that emotional tears are actually chemically different from other types of tears. They have more protein and contain some stress hormones that aren't even in basal or reflexive tears. We cry these special tears when we experience extreme emotional states, strong feelings like joy, grief, anger, and surprise. We even cry in empathy, like when we watch emotional movie scenes and react to the action even though we aren't living through the drama ourselves. This emotional crying triggers the release of endorphins that helps us manage our emotional states. These endorphins provide a way for us to reduce stress and pain and calm ourselves down when we're overly excited. These tears also trigger the release of oxytocin, a hormone that helps us feel comforted and cared for. It's released in warm, fuzzy moments, like when we get hugs from our friends or when we see baby animals. Aww, look at them. They're so cute. Together, all these chemicals help lower our heart rate, calm our breathing, and promote a general feeling of well-being. So the next time you shed some tears, remember that crying is just our brain and body trying to take care of us, and the release of tears reminds us that we are very, very human. Olivia, if you're listening to this, don't worry. You will love again. I gotta go. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really. I've seen this one over a hundred times.